how to make repeating groups nice and responsive. There are a few rules to follow, but once you get the concept, it will be much more straightforward. Let's get stuck in. So I have a group that's set to minimum 20% width, and I have a page that is 1280 in width, and it's not fixed width. This means that the page can expand and contract down. So I'm going to grab a repeating group. I'm going to make it 900 in width. Drag it down a bit. Just make it two rows tall. And the type of content I'm going to set is a user. Let's have a look at what we have in our database currently for users. So we have a full name, basically a profile image and a job title. So three pieces of information. And in our app data, I have gone ahead and populated 10 rows with user data. We also have an email address, of course. So our repeating group will have the person's name, image, job title, and email. And then we'll make sure that that's nice and responsive and can squeeze down to say maybe a tablet size for the particular style that I'm creating. Data source, will we do a search for users? Don't need to sort that. The layout style, I'm going to set to full width. Basically, I have 10 users, so I know that if I set it to full width, which means on page load, it loads all 10, that's absolutely fine. If I had, say, more than 50 items in my repeating group, I'll probably set that to extend vertical scroll, which means you have to scroll down the page to load further cells. I'm just going to center that horizontally, which I tend to do as I'm going along. Okay, the cell minimum width is currently 900. That is the full width of this. I'm going to say minimum width, probably about 600. I don't want it to squeeze further down than 600 because this is just going to be for desktop and tablet. Okay, let's grab an image, drop that in there. Now I want a round profile image and there is just one way to achieve this in Bubble. So the current images in the database are all different shapes and sizes. So I'm going to say current cells uses image. And I'm going to make sure that this is 50 by 50. Okay. Actually, I'm going to make that 40 by 40. I'm going to make sure it's fixed width because I don't want it stretching. I want it a fixed square. Roundness, I'm going to set to 20. So 20 on each side, so that's a perfect circle. And at the moment, the image might look a bit odd. And we need a third party plugin included in Bubble called Image IX. So if I click on the end of the expression image, it's going to give me this more option. And under more, I can then say processed with Image IX. And the setting we're looking for here is resize to fit the dimensions by cropping. Now, Image IX is a third party image processor included within Bubble. It just helps us get the exact kind of crop that we want um, automatically. And then the run mode rendering you need for this particular setting to work is stretch. Now I'm going to grab some text. Now this is just an estimation, okay? In terms of the width of the text here, I'm going to get everything in the repeating group and then refine from there. So I'm going to say current cells uses full name and uncheck fixed width. We want to start with everything at 20%. Okay, I'm just going to edit the style to be Arial 16. I'm going to say center text vertically. And I'm going to set the highest maybe about 24. Again, this is just sort of guesswork and just getting it in an approximation. I'm going to copy and paste this text. 
this will say job title, copy and paste again. This will say email address. Okay, so these pieces of text are all the same width. In terms of the spacing, if we highlight each of these elements then right click. Now we can say distribute horizontally. So those gaps will be the same here. Now, the names and job titles are different widths, so this is not going to play out perfectly, but it just gives us a good starting point. I'm going to bring this up a bit. Okay, why don't we preview the page and see what we have so far. So is it responsive? Let's have a look. It is quite responsive, but I can see the text wrapping here. Now there is an option to prevent this from happening because you don't want these cells being any taller. You want it nice and neat on the same row. So what we'll do is, let's do it for all of these. This is the setting here, cut off content if the element is not tall enough. So if we check that, check that, check that, what it will do is just chop off some of the text, which you would have seen within other apps, and add three little dots. Okay, now we're losing a piece of text, this here, which is jumping around, but it's a pretty good start. Why don't we jump into the responsive editor at this stage and have a look at the settings there. So I'm on the 1200, which is a small laptop, and this looks fine. And if I start dragging this across, we can see this is getting smaller and smaller and smaller, which is fine. Now this group doesn't need to be so small. The size I'm trying to get down to is this tablet width over here, which is 768. So currently this is set to 20% minimum width, which means that it's going to shrink in proportion to the page. It's going to shrink at the same rate down to 20% of its original size. So the original size of this group is 970 in width. Okay. If I had to estimate, I would say, so 10% of that is 97. So just below 200 in width. Now it doesn't need to be 200 in width because the tablet is 768 of width. So I'm just going to increase this over here because for this particular design, I can get away with, yeah, about 75%. If I was creating a repeating group for a phone, I would probably clone this page and then redesign it because a phone is a single column. So having four pieces of data or text or elements in a row doesn't really make sense. We would then create taller cells and have stuff stacked beneath each other. Let's preview the page again. So here we can see we've got the three dots and the email. We are losing the email for some people, we need to look at that, but that's probably down to tablet size there. Okay, what I'm going to do now is add titles to the top, because if the repeating group was really tall with lots of elements, we might just want um, some titles at the top. Now making those titles responsive with the text in the cells is the tricky bit. But there's only one thing we need to do, and that is to make sure that anything we put in the header at a similar position is at the exact same position and has the same responsive settings as the text in the cell. So if we have a name in the cell, in the repeating group cell, the heading must be the same width as that name, the element itself, and must have exactly the same responsive settings. Let me demonstrate. So I'm going to use a neat little trick here. We're going to grab a group. Make sure the group is in the repeating group cell. Make it full width of the cell. Uncheck fixed width. 
rename this to header. Uncheck element is visible on page load because we're only going to show this group in the first cell. How do we achieve that? What we say on the conditional tab is when current cells index is one, the first cell, then we show that group, okay? Under the appearance, we want to collapse that group in any other cell. Why don't we also make this group a different color? FA across is fine. Now I'm going to have to make this picture a bit smaller. 34s. And let's see how this renders out. So the first thing I'm going to do quickly before I do that is just remove the separator. Actually, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to include the separator, just make it much lighter. Okay, so we can see the header just in the first cell and let's put in the text. I'm just going to go copy and paste in there. So I have the same settings as this. I do want to make it smaller, it's 24. The text size is going to be 14. Now it needs to start at the same X value. The X value of this is 65. So this needs to start at 65. And now we can write full name. Now I know that all of this text is the same, so I'm going to go copy paste, knock it back in the group, have a look at the X axis number here, 294. So this needs to start at 294. That is job title. And then this is 524. So copy paste, knock it back in and change to 524. That is the email address. Okay, let's have a look at the responsive settings. So the trick is to make full name, job title, email move with these elements. Let's see how it responds. And you can see it responding really nicely there, all the way down. Okay, we have a bit of space here. So I'm going to move these items um, away from each other slightly. So I'm going to use my keypad to just push this right across. To 600. Drag that across there to the end. Start this one at 600. Drag it right across. Now we've got some space. So 294 is the width of that one. Drag this one across. 294. Make sure that show distances on hover is checked so you can see the same view that I'm seeing. Okay, and full name can stay the same. Now I think we're doing a better job at making, taking advantage of the space we have. So we squeeze this down. This is much better. You can see where it stops squeezing down. And that's because the responsive setting stopped when it got to 600 pixels in width and it just went to fixed width after that. You can see we squeeze down, squeeze down, and then stop at 600 and then the page squeezes down. Okay, so the various rules that we applied here is we made sure, we thought about what we're putting on the page. We made sure that these elements, there was enough space, enough width for the approximation of the name. We applied this cutoff setting 
so that the text didn't wrap to the next line beneath it, making the cell too tall. We made sure that the X value of the header and the one beneath it were exactly the same. Okay, they need to be exactly the same. Otherwise, things start to move at a different pace in the responsive design. And we also made full width use of the repeating group itself, space the elements out really nicely. Sometimes an email address is a bit longer than I'm demonstrating. So that's why I left all of the space on the right hand side for longer email addresses. Another trick is to not put too many elements in a cell. If you want to display more elements in a cell, what I tend to do is add a button at the very end that says view more, and that can then show a pop-up with more information on the particular user from my repeating group.